Before, long ago, when we were not awake, the world was cold and dark and empty. But then, from out of the sky and out of the sleeping earth came the great ancestral beings. Some took the shape of people, others took the shape of animals, and into everything on earth they put a part of their being. This is the story of creation, how the world began, which the Aboriginal people of Australia tell. They call that time when life on earth began the dream time. And stories about the dream time have been passed on by word of mouth from generation to generation for thousands of years around the fire. When Europeans first came to Australia just over 200 years ago, they gave all the people already living there one name. They called them Aborigine. It means original or first inhabitant. But you know, those first inhabitants weren't one people at all. They spoke hundreds of different languages and had many names for themselves. And they didn't think of themselves as the first people either. For them, the great ancestral beings and the creatures of the dream time, they were the first people. You see, in the dream time, animals could speak and understand. They lived like people, traveling from place to place in search of food and water, living by strict laws. The Red Plains Kangaroo People, the Turtle People, the Crab People, and the Starfish People. It was in the dream time when the Bandicoot people first lived by the sea. Bungaro was a Bandicoot man and a good hunter. And all he caught would be shared, because it was law. He lived happily, because no bandicoot man was selfish. But there was another who lived in that country, Alamina, the starfish man. Now Alamina lived alone. No bandicoot man knew where he slept each night. For Alamina had a canoe, and in it, he would paddle wherever he wanted. Especially to a beautiful island over the waters. And that was how he wanted things to stay, because Alamina was a greedy, selfish man. One day, Bangaro was quietly fishing, when Alamina the starfish man appeared, paddling his canoe. As usual, Alamina would shout insults at Bangaro. You can't fish. You can't go wherever you like. I have my canoe. You have nothing. My canoe. My island. Alamina was shouting, Bungaro tried to spear his tormentor, but it was no good at all. <laughs> With Alamina's laughter still ringing in his ears, Bungaro thought long and hard about the starfish man. Alamina's selfishness was a poison, a poison that could infect all of the bandicoot people. Something had to be done, and as he thought, a plan began to form. I will gain his trust and take his canoe. But a starfish man would never trust a bandicoot, so I must make his selfishness part of my plan. The next day, when Alamina paddled over, he heard some kind of commotion on the shore. Ah, bandicoot men fighting. This was interesting. They were arguing over a fish. Most unusual. Bandicoots always shared their catch. They were never selfish or greedy. And yes, it was Bungara, taking the fish for himself. Very interesting indeed, thought Alamina. camped that night, he hoped there'd be a visitor to share the hunt. And he was right. When Alamina stepped carefully into the firelight, Bangaran knew his trap had been sprung. 
Welcome, said Bangura. Come, sit by the fire. See this great fish I caught today? Alamino was suspicious, but Bangura seemed friendly enough. Your fish, he asked? Yes, said Bangura. I caught it. I did the work, and it's mine. Alamino said he understood. After all, he made his canoe. Why should he share it? Bangura smiled at the starfish man. We are both the same, he said. And because we are, you share my fish with me. But in the morning when Bangura woke, he was alone. Alamina had left while he slept. It was then Bangura saw the starfish man. He was paddling away, back to his island. Ah, thought Bangara. Alamina, we'll see you again. <laughs> yes. Time passed, till one day. This time with a present for Bangara, some fine turtle eggs. Today, said Kalabmina, we eat the feasts of my island. And so it went, day after day. Alamina way on his island, Bangara fishing in the sea. But each night, Alamina would return and they would eat together and tell stories. And slowly, Alamina the Starfish Man began to trust Bangura in the bandicoot. Each time Alamina appeared, Bangura would have gifts. They became so friendly that Alamina would let Bangura help him with the canoe. Never before had a Bangdakut so much as touched the canoe of a starfish man. This time Alamina had brought rich fruits and he'd come during the day. It was time now for the next part of Bangara's plan. Pretending to be tired, he suggested they rest for a while. Alamina, though a little suspicious, agreed. The canoe was left on the beach.
overcome with anger and rage, Alamina plunged into the water. But a starfish man cannot swim. With one last desperate trick, Alamina changed to a starfish, and his spirit followed his canoe. Bangara laughed and laughed, but the starfish spirit was right behind. really happened. But today, there is a rock in that place that looks just like an overturned canoe. And some say that Bungara is still trapped under there. For Bungara had broken nature's law, and nature never fails to punish. And Alamina, well, he's still close by, watching over that stolen canoe. Alamina was a greedy, selfish man, that's what the storyteller said. So, why was Bangara punished? What went wrong with his plan? Maybe selfishness is like a poison, and it can poison anyone. I mean, why did Bangara really want that canoe? For his people, or for himself? And you know that rock, like an upturned canoe? Well, it's still there, on the northern coast of Australia. And in the sea there, starfish still wave their arms, as if trying to get back the stolen canoe. For many Aboriginal people, every rock and stone has a story to tell. Closer to home, do you know any stories about well-known landmarks near you? Look, here's Giant's Causeway uh, off County Antrim in the northeast of Ireland. Geologists say it was formed by the slow cooling of a massive volcanic lava flow about 60 million years ago. But there is another explanation to how Giant's Causeway got its name. Finn McCool was a fine big lump of a giant of a man. He lived in Ireland long ago, a poet and a warrior too, chief of them all. But what good was that if he couldn't limp across to Scotland and tell the giants over there a thing or two without getting his boots wet? No good, so he soon fixed that. With his giant big hands, he scooped up giant rocks and threw them into the sea. Rock after rock went into the sea. One of them he threw too far, and it became the Isle of Man, so they say. But he did it in the end, a grand new road all the way to Scotland, across the sea. I don't know what's happened to that road today, but the bits at either end can still be seen at Giant's Causeway in Ireland and on Staffa off the Scottish coast where they call it Fingal's Cave. And down here in Cornwall is another landmark with a strange story to it, the Rundle Stone. It was just before the stroke of midnight, long, long ago. The ship was going down. But the captain stayed on board. The ship was almost gone. The captain's still on board. Eight times the ship's bell rang. Just the captain rang the bell. And then he drowned near the Rundle Stone. In the nearby churchyard of St. Levens, there is a low altar tomb on the grave of that captain who drowned. People there say that sometimes in the churchyard, you can hear what sounds like a ship's bell at sea. There are lots of landmarks with interesting stories about them. The Needles on the Isle of Wight and Carter Idris in Wales, Dragon's Hill in Oxfordshire. Find out about them or why don't you make up your own story about a landmark or an unusual building near you? Like cooling towers. What do they look like? Elephants feet on fire. What story could you make up about them? Or make up your own picture. Cut out a well-known landmark and put it somewhere different. Then invent a story about it.